welcome to the Marie Manu Cherry Show, where energy and medicine meet. I will be your host for the next hour. I have over 19 years of healthcare experience and began my career as an energy medicine practitioner while working as an oncology nurse at a Seattle area hospital. My skill in moving energy combined with my medical background have been a catalyst for change in many people's lives. I hope the next hour will be transformative for you as well. Good morning, everyone. We are live in. It is rainy in Seattle, but I must admit when I pulled out of the driveway this morning, everything just looks so happy. I mean, just it's like, it's not freezing. It's not super pouring. It's just misty. But all the flowers were like standing up straight and the grass looks so green. And I always talk about the weather at the top of the show so that wherever you are in the world, no matter what time of day it is, you can get present. Not present to Seattle weather necessarily, but maybe look out your own window or remind yourself of what time of day it is. Because when you're in the present moment, that's when things have the most profound activation of change and healing and growth of consciousness. Everything happens in the nothingness, and the present moment is the most profound nothingness that could ever exist. Uh, One of my favorite things to do on the show is to interview people who I believe are on the leading edge of thought, and today is one of those days. Um, I'll be interviewing Lauren Walker. Uh, She is the author of The Energy to Heal, Find Lasting Freedom from Stress and Trauma, through Energy Medicine Yoga, just got released. Um, congratulations, she'll be talking to us soon. Uh, Lauren previously published Energy Medicine Yoga, Amplify the Healing Power of Your Yoga Practice by Sounds True, and the Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription also by Sounds True. Lauren teaches um, Energy Medicine Yoga across the U.S. and internationally, has been featured many times in Yoga Journal, Mantra Magazine, Yoga Digest, and published a feature article about her yoga work in the New York Times in 2016, she was named one of the top 100 most influential yoga teachers in America. And for more of her work, you can just go to energymedicineyoga.net. Welcome to the show, Lauren. It's so lovely to have you. Thank you. It's so beautiful to be back with you, Marie. I just love speaking with you. And you bring such wisdom already just with the talking about the weather and the present moment. It's like, (laughs) oh, yes, it's beautiful. I'm excited for this time together. Well, you know, you and I met in Canada, I believe. We were both teaching. Um, I think that's where we first met. Do you do you recall? You know, actually, you, oh. were instrum- <laughs> you were instrumental in getting me to teach at Hollyhock. We oh. hadn't met yet, but you had read my books and you referred me to the team at Hollyhock. And I am forever grateful to you oh, for that. It was lovely. And then I think we met there. You know, we were both teaching, I think, something like that. But I just, I just think I met you in Hollyhock. But it's lovely to see your face again. And congratulations. This book is timely. I love it. I absolutely love it. And one of the first things you write in the introduction, which is so incredibly profound, you wrote, the truth is, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, you have endless ability to heal from any experience you've gone through, which is so incredibly true because it's all based in energy. Everything's based in energy. I'm sure you have talked till the cows come home about everything is energy. And I I still think the majority of the population still doesn't understand this concept that everything, everything you can see is made out of subatomic particles. And even though it's solid material from our perception, it's constantly moving. But so are every, you know, centimeter of your organs, you know, every, everything of your physiology is completely subatomic particles. So I just love what you wrote because your power, you write, you have this endless amount of power that lives within you. And this very moment, um, this power is energy and you can move energy. Anybody can move energy. They may not recognize this, but they absolutely can. So how are one of the ways that you help your students and your clients and your readers to recognize again for the millionth time that everything is subatomic particles? You know, that's a great question because that really, I think, is the the sort of stumbling block or the gate that keeps people separated from being able to really dive in and do some profound healing, even what we would might call miraculous healing, even though we know that miracles um, happen all the time and they're just, they're actually just sort of common. Uh, events that can happen for everybody. We just don't understand how, so we name them miracles. But I think that understanding of what is energy is the is the block that people have. And so 
I have spent years studying the science behind this, studying with、um, different teachers, trying to understand field theory and quantum theory and all of that, because it is so powerful to know, and it's. It's sort of a step out of your conscious mind because, like you said, everything looks solid. I touch my physical body. I'm like, "Yup, I'm here." I'm like looking at you through a computer. I can touch the computer. It feels pretty solid. If it fell on my toe, it would hurt. <laughs> But the thing is, that is true, and. Everything is energy, and so that vibrating bits of information. What Nassim Haramein has taught me the most is they're called plunks, plunk oscillating、um, bits of information. That's the smallest bit of thing that we have discovered. And knowing that we could go smaller than that, but we can't really categorize it or, or see it or you know measure it any smaller. But that is. The essence of everything, the whole universe, is just vibration, just sound, just light, information. And I think one of the ways that you can sort of start to understand that is,、um, you think about things like radio or TV. Before maybe you were plugging into the Ethernet, you turned on your TV, and there were pictures on the TV. I Love Lucy was on TV. Happy Days. How did that happen? Where did they come from? You turn on your radio. You're in your car. All of a sudden, you're hearing Dionne Warwick, or you know, you're hearing Smashing Pumpkins. How are you hearing that? It is waves, and those waves, those radio waves, those microwaves, carry information. Carry information, and that information gets transformed by whatever device it is that's receiving it. And broadcasts out whatever it is that you have tuned into. Okay, so you also are a receiver of information. You could consider yourself a radio tower, and you are tuning in to. You're tuning into Marie. I'm tuning into Lauren, and so I'm picking up the information that then spins into physical reality, and I appear as Lauren. But underneath Lauren, I'm just. A plunk field vibrating really, really, really fast. Love it. Yeah. So a lot of part of my work is sort of getting that metaphorical understanding to be understanding it as metaphor, and then understanding that it actually is reality. It, it is, and that was very lovely. Thank you for describing it again, so that our listeners and and so people can be be reminded how. Not only is this real, but it's also extremely powerful. And in your book, you talk about that people work with energy all the time. They may not be aware of it, like you and I consciously work with it. You know, we we know that perception is everything. And one of the things that we're doing to the best of our ability is helping to change the perception of others so that they can have a different experience. And and you write in the book that you've worked with energy. If you, if like you said, something fell on your toe and it would hurt, of course, right? And we forget that that's energy too. You would lean over and massage your toe, and that's you. Working with energy. Whenever you've had a headache, and you put your hands on your temples and you're massaging your head, that's working with energy. So we're working with energy all the time. Even parents are profoundly doing this with their kids. Their kids fall down and scrape their knee, and the first thing you do is you put your hands around the scrape. You know, you start hugging that person, and you're moving subatomic particles. So we're engaging with our energy all the time, but we don't recognize that this engagement could go much deeper. And more profoundly to release、um, traumas, and right now the world is drenched in trauma. Unfortunately, more so than ever. I mean,、uh, obviously, you know the pandemic, which is still you know engaging around the world.、Um, we have a weird war. I mean, there's always a war somewhere, right? And then, of course, politically things are interesting to say the least, right? So all, and then you have your own personal traumas that have happened throughout the years, which could be triggered at any moment. Or are constantly triggered for some people all the time.、Um, you, you write in your book, and I really want you to talk about this part、uh, even more so. And of course, you can talk about whatever you want. But you talk so beautifully about how animals know how to release traumas in their body. You know, and they're like fighting each other in the wild and eating each other. You know, or being chased. Like today, I opened up the front door, and three little bunnies were running. You know, like okay, I wonder how long they're going to be existing with the coyotes that are. Not too far away, but they know how to sh shake off the trauma, so to speak. So maybe you could talk to that a little bit, because、uh, I I think that helps people to understand that they have power within them to do all the things that you you have 
provided for them to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that's a really profound piece of releasing trauma. And I think one of the things to understand is that, you know, we are animals as well. We are creatures and we have this innate wisdom just like animals do. But because we have so um, civilized ourselves, and you could take that for <laughs> whether that's real or, or not, because I think a lot of things of civilization are actually barbaric. However, because we are so steeped in this sort of mental construct of what what it needs, what we need to be doing to even even to think about caretaking for yourself, and then that piece sort of falls away of the natural things that we have evolved to do. Um, you know, energy medicine, aside from the energy medicine yoga, but energy medicine is how you how we got here today. If we didn't have these tools as part of our repertoire for thousands of years, we wouldn't exist today. And so things like that you just mentioned, like massaging a part of your body that hurts or rubbing your tummy or all of these different things, ways to release stress have come with us through evolution and, and allowed us to be where we are today. And so that shaking off is a natural way and a very easy way of releasing the energetic imprints of trauma and stress. And so trauma and stress react in the body in very, very similar ways physiologically. And they are, it is an input of energy into your system. And it's easy to see that when you think about like a physical thing that happens, right? So my computer drops on my toe, bam, there's a physical insult to my toe. That is also an energetic impulse to the physical body, right? Something has come in, moved, hit me very hard, and now I have pain. So you can rub that, but also you shake that, you release that energy out of the fields of the body. And where that becomes even more profound is when the insult isn't a physical, when it's an emotional or a spiritual, that still affects and impinges the physical body as well as the emotional and spiritual bodies, all of these fields that are kind of guiding us, but we don't see it. We feel it, but we don't see it the way something hitting your toe, you feel and see that. And so we're like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. I feel sad. I want to curl up in a ball and cry. I'm feeling angry. I want to go like, you know, yell and scream. But shaking off the body the way animals do is one really profound way to release that insulting energy, that disruptive energy from the system. And it's very, very powerful to do. Wow. I, I just I just love the way you talked about the animals because they do like my dog, Charles, if we go on a walk and he smells some dog and they don't like each other for whatever reason. Right. And they start growling at each other. Right. And, and then, of course, we pull them away and nobody gets hurt. But yeah, he shakes off and then he's happy again. He's prancing down the path as if nothing happened. And, and so literally through energy medicine yoga, we can, there's many, many techniques weak or that you have um, created and used with um, many people around the world. We can reduce, eradicate and come back to the original imprint of our consciousness and our awareness rather than these layers and layers of pain emotional pain, let's say, and physical pain that are stopping us from really living a wonderful and amazing life. And as you write so beautifully in the book, too, which is really important, you know, these stresses and traumas, if we don't deal with them, they can lead to disease, unfortunately. This is really what is stress, even modern medicine says stress is what causes disease in the body. Stress is the number one cause of disease in the body. And one of the top causes of stress in the body is unprocessed emotion. So you extrapolate unprocessed emotion leads to stress, stress leads to disease, unprocessed emotion leads to disease. And there's many, many studies that corroborate this. What it really comes down to is we need to learn how to deal with our emotions. And that doesn't just mean like letting it go. It means harvesting the information that your emotions are providing you. And emotions are, are powerful. We need to pay attention to them. We need to listen to them. We need to be guided by them. And then we need to release the energy of them and act on the information that they've given us. And we don't, we don't look at emotions as something to study or worthy of our time and attention. 
And what we come up with is the world we're in today, which is just drowning in these challenging emotions with no tools of how to get beyond. So we're stuck in fear and anger and anxiety and grief and worry and, and all of those cause stressors to the body. And we are just sick. We're just sick in so many ways. And we, we need to, we owe it to ourselves just personally. Who wants to feel that way? Who wants to be afraid all the time or angry all the time? You can't really function in your life if you're constantly under the stressors that are holding you back from just being peaceful. It's not even, I mean, yes, ultimately shine your light out, do your work in the world, be, be engaged, be happy, be glorious. But at the very just basic, like just be peaceful and calm and centered in your own day to day. Absolutely. And, and and I think so many people don't really know really the true essence of who they are or their magnificence or what they could be experiencing in life in, in every way because of all this repressed emotional baggage that they refuse to investigate. And so, so I love that there's these tools that you have through movement of your body um, that allows one person or anyone, of course, to release the stagnation and to grow into the authentic aspect of who they are, which really does feed the world. It feeds, feeds them first and foremost, but it feeds the world. And we really need our immune systems to be functioning at a very high level these days. And if you have a lot of repressed anger, you know, frustration, fear, it's not great for your immune system. It's not helping your solar plexus, your hormones, your lymphatic system. It's not helping any of that and, and major organs because a lot of organs absorb negative energy. Uh, oh, you know. yes. I mean, they're all aligned, like all of the, so we have nine energy systems that essentially run your body. And those are the, from which everything else arises. And then all the physiological systems that you mentioned are all um, affected by these energy systems. So just like you said, if you're not um, dealing with and expressing your, your fears and transforming those into courageous actions, um, or courageous thoughts and experiences, then your bladder and kidney, all the waterworks of your body are going to be affected by that and, and not in a good way. And that is, is a huge system of the body. It's not just your bladder and kidneys and your ability to, um, to cleanse, to clean the whole system and to release excess water. It keeps the, the saline levels uh, optimizing the body. It runs your nervous system, your nervous system, how you feel and respond to everything in your world. These are important systems to have online and working at their coherent best. And if you are not um, uh, doing these techniques to bring your body into harmony, you are challenging all these systems. And in the worst scenarios, these systems are breaking down into disease patterns and into things that that we don't want to deal with. We really don't have the time. If you don't think you have the time to deal with your um, anger or your fear, you really don't have the time to deal with some crazy disease. You really don't. And, and, and by that time, you're too exhausted to really work on the emotional component when you have to go in for treatments and take medications. And, you, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, people can do it, obviously. And and they can with a lot of support and help, but it's, you don't want to do it then, you know, you, you absolutely don't want to do it. I also love how you talked in the book, because people always think like trauma is terrible things too, but people are also traumatized by happiness and joy and have, you know, good things could be happening in their life and they might self-sabotage or not be able to really ride the wave of success or love or improving health if if they don't feel good about themselves or they don't love themselves or there could be multiple things that put them into a place where they start to hold themselves back from their incredible successes. Yeah, good things can be traumatic too, right? Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, that self-sabotage is a real thing. And, um, you know, there's, a, I, I keep thinking, I just finished watching um, Grace and Frankie and there's a, a whole piece <laughs> of it about, you know, Grace not wanting to ever feel her emotions or deal with her emotions her whole life. And I think one of the things is we do, we fear them, we push them away. She uses alcohol. We use many different things to not to touch into our emotions. And so there's two pieces there. One is that with this work, 
being there's sort of two tracks you can take a very intellectual track and i'm a very intellectual person so i want to know everything why did this happen why did i react this way why did i do that why did they do that very intellectual but mm -hmm. then there's a whole somatic piece that's in the physical body in the energetic body where you don't have to go into the story and that is wonderful for people like grace who don't want to excavate what's going on but the other piece that you said too was also in that, that show is so wonderful about Coyote finally doing well in his life and his mother fearing that he was going to go and pull a coyote and throw himself off the rails because of his past patterns of, of trauma and self-destruction. That when life is so good, um, we can self-destruct because of the other traumas in our life, our stressors, our histories that we haven't dealt with. And we see that ha playing out all the time people that are just at the cusp of success and then shoot themselves in the foot we might have seen something just happen at the oscars it's i know i was just thinking about that you know like right? he's about to win the most prestigious award and he's young to get this award which he did receive and he does something crazy you know like unnecessarily crazy yeah and right. but you can you know i, I always try to have to try to get to a place where I can understand what someone's actions are, no matter how egregious and how awful or strange or bizarre. Why did somebody act in a particular way? And I think, I mean, I don't know Will Smith. I don't know his whole story. But um, as just as a black man in America, even a very successful black man, and he's talked about this always, you know, sort of uh, the struggles that he's had within his industry as a black man. And I can extrapolate. I have black men in my family. I see the struggles that they go through daily. I'm a white middle class woman, so obviously I don't have those same, but I have empathy and compassion and I can see and extrapolate. Wow, what must that life be like? just from a very even just a very teeny limited like could i imagine for a moment oh, sure yeah and the, so the pain and the suffering and the struggle and then being in that intense pressure cooker and then one thing that just triggered him and we don't know why that was his trigger but it was yeah. and what that shows to me is um is the traumas that so many of us hold that aren't expressed that can really derail us if we don't release those energetic imprints from our energy systems and you know he has the opportunity now to do that work but oh but god bless like so so sad that he had to go through that in such a public way and i can i have a lot of compassion for him and and for anyone that is struggling and that is acting out in ways that that don't serve them but then in larger ways when we see people in high positions of power that are acting out in their power positions and causing incredible pain and suffering for a lot of people. That's when I feel like we need two things. We need a boundary, like stop. You're not allowed to do that. Like it's non-negotiable. You're not allowed to do that. And then let's take you someplace so that you can heal, so that you don't even want to do that anymore. Right. right? I love it. I just love it. Um, I think we're far away from being able to take people off to, you know, a nice, padded room where they can with some beautiful herbs and delicious food and lovely yoga clothes and let them scream and yell for an hour i i mean you and i would be happily do that you know at a heart in a heartbeat like okay yeah sign me up i'll go in you know but um individuals can do this on their own and you know you have all the tools and the techniques here in your beautiful new book uh the excuse me the energy to heal finding lasting freedom from stress and trauma, which is really wonderful through energy medicine yoga, which was just released. You just had it released. So congratulations for the publication of it. And the wonderful thing is if you're a parent and you're reading this book, you can help your kids, you know, because kids have a lot of stressors, you know, obviously the world and pandemic, you know, information is also a stressor for children, but just kids can be mean to each other at school. Teachers can have bad days. Kids feel stress academically. Uh, and parents can offer that information for their children. They come home from school, they tell a terrible story, and now you can go, oh, I'm going to go to chapter so-and-so. I remember that was an easy one. And you can help your kids so that they don't have to carry that stress through all their lives and work on it when they're finally in some sort of calm aspect of themselves, right? Which is a blessing. No matter when you do it, it's a blessing. But to be able to teach children to do that at such an early age is really quite profound. Uh, so yeah, I just love your book. I would encourage people to 
um, purchase this book. And um, where can people find you, Lauren? So you can find me at energymedicineyoga.net or emyoga.net. They'll both take you there. And everything that I'm doing is on the website there, links to all the social and upcoming courses. We actually have a course, a companion course to the book that's coming out at the beginning of June. And that is, you know, people learn in different ways, different styles. Some people will just pick up the book, read it, run with it, have all the tools they need and they're good to go. Other people are more visual learners, interactive learners, and that's what that course is for. So we'll have a practice every week and then an hour live Q&A with me to kind of unpack anything that you're not clear about or unsure about. And um, that's a really beautiful course coming up. And I just wanna talk uh, for a moment just about what you said for, for teens. I remember when I first started studying this work and I thought, oh, I wish I had these tools when I was a kid. Junior high and high school were absolutely misery for me. It was so such a struggle on every level. And um, I actually created a class um, called Tools for Teens and it's available on the website. I think it's only like $25. All of the money goes to a local nonprofit here that is working on um, preventing teen suicide, which is a huge issue. And I actually created the course after um, two experiences with young people. One was my cousin and I was visiting and I just saw him kind of going off the rails and struggling and screaming and not having any way to just bring himself back to center. And um, another good friend of mine here who's now in college, he's doing really well, but he struggled so much in high school and actually had a, um, a suicide attempt and it was devastating for him and his family. Thank God it didn't succeed. Um, but I, I actually piloted a local class with him in it and some other students because I was like, we need to help the kids today. They really need tools to release the emotions that they're feeling both the ones that are being bullied and the bullies like both sure. sides of the equation need to be able to work with their emotions so that they can um huh, be calm be peaceful be centered be the people that they are and that they want to be but that all of this conflicting stuff coming in through social media through all of the 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 news of the day through all the anxiety that they're feeling how can they get through that and be the positive change because really the change comes from the youth Right. So if they are strong and empowered and have tools, the transformations that are going to happen in this country in the next several decades will be amazing and profound amazing. And in the right direction. Yeah. I, I definitely can feel it. I think we're moving in the right direction. And now people can go to your website and get a tool for their teens, which is wonderful. Congratulations, Lauren, on your most recent book. I think it's a hit. It's all of them are, of course, but it is just lovely and so timely. Thank you so much for coming on the show and talking to us about energy medicine yoga and how to have lasting freedom from stress and trauma. Um, have a beautiful day in Montana and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. I always love talking with you and thank you for all of your words of praise. I really hope this book serves as many people as possible. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Lauren. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. And uh, that's the Marie Manutrey Show. We'll be right back with more with the Open Call and Show Day with Marie. Be right back. Thanks, Lauren. That was so thank fun. You. Thank you, Marie. That was awesome. That was so fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was <laughs> awesome. I really appreciate it. Of course. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. We'll talk again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, Benny. Great. Okay done with that. Terrible island in all of the Greek islands. Then you
been asking them to help me break through this sort of dead end and find a community and just kind of get to the next level. And it's been mind blowing. <laughs> so here, here I go with the emotions. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, I get really overwhelmed all the time because I just, it's like with love or just empathy for other people. And it's, it's hard to sort of rein it in. <laughs> um, I'm just so grateful to, to be able to chat with you today. So Great. <laughs> bear with me for a second. Sure. Um, it's just I feel so overwhelmed sometimes by the just the feast of all these rabbit holes to explore on the spiritual journey. And I'm kind of needing a little bit of focus to figure out where my strengths lie mm-hmm. and how I can use this yeah, to uh, help others. Okay, great. Um, so, so there's that, and I'm, you know, if you could give me a general reading too, I don't know if this, I have to. Choose I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm going to try to answer just one question at a time because we have so many people okay. who would like to have a question answered. Uh, first of all, what could be helpful, although I don't want to stop the emotional release. I think that's wonderful, especially if that's been an issue for you. But just know that leaving the heart chakra alone um, helps us to actually become more in that neutral alignment and, and i don't mean you have to like n- negate it forever you know there you're in a really sweet spot where you're releasing more emotions than you have previously but sometimes when you when people hang out especially specifically in the heart chakra a lot of people don't use all their chakra system they hang out in their fourth which is the heart chakra and then their head and then they ignore the rest of their energy system and it can be really overwhelming when when you're empathetic and you're in your heart chakra all the yeah. time and then you can't make decisions you can't move forward you're stuck you have to recover constantly from the overwhelm, right? Yeah. That's that's exhausting. So I would recommend that you start to bring your awareness to your feet. I always say hang out. Most people say, what do you mean by that? But even right now while I'm sitting in this chair, I'm wiggling my toes. I'm forcing my mind to allow mm. myself to feel my feet in my shoes. And I'm, because I, I even forgot what color shoes I put on this morning. And now that I've, because my shoes are actually underneath, I can't, look down and see them that you know they're do you want me to check no no i know, I know. <laughs> uh, and so all of a sudden i can see what color my shoes are i even remember what my socks look like and that's the present moment right the present moment is yeah. incredibly simplistic really beautiful mm. and extremely powerful it's not the complicated over analytical piece that the mind makes us think is the present moment you know that's the mind has nothing to do with the present moment other than uh, I had to skip out to the kitchen and grab some warm water um, before I started to answer callers' phone calls. So I would love it if you would stay out of your chest and then uh, and explore the rest of your body and, and see mm-hmm. how you're able to perhaps still allow yourself to emote when you need to, which is important, but to not be so overwhelmed that you can't experience whatever it is that you want to experience, right? You can't move forward as easily. And then the other piece... I loved how you said you'd you like to know what direction to move in to help other people, but I'm going to ask you to look at it from a different perspective. And as I say this, I, I just want you to know, and everyone who's listening, everything is about perception. And even though we may think that perception doesn't really matter, it absolutely 100% does. In fact, as a healer, my job every single day is to help change the perception of my clients. No matter what they're working on, no matter what's wrong with them physically, no matter what's happening, they have to look at it from a completely different perception, one that they've never entertained before, one that makes probably no logical sense to them. And that's how they start to move their subatomic particles in their body in a healthy, more fluent way. And so I brought this up to you because I don't, and, and, you know, you get to do whatever you want, but I don't want you to think of it as helping others. Will you? Of course. I want you to think of it, what can I do in the world that brings me such incredible joy, fulfillment, mm. right, and um, excitement that also would be beneficial to others? I actually think when people focus just mm. on the joy and the fulfillment, they right. will naturally help other people. Even the person mm. who famously, and I don't know who they were, but made the sticky notes, you know, that people would think, well, that's not very helpful. I mean, my house is covered with sticky notes. We use them all the time. They are extremely helpful. So I think people need to let go of, oh, I have to help people because that feels like a need and that feels urgent and it feels, Mm. 
it, I don't think it's very fulfilling. It, it's almost like a, a leaking of energy is happening in the body when we <gasps> have to take care of them. You know, it reminds me mm-hmm. when I watched the grandkids and I was watching my oldest children last Saturday. Uh, you know, we live really close to each other, like five minutes apart. So I can be there pretty quickly. And they're like, we want to go out for dinner tonight. Do you want to come over? And like, yeah. So I'm over there, you know, relaxing. And there's a little baby monitor in front of me, which I'm got my eyes glued to it because the baby sleeps on the king bed. And so I want to be there, even though she walks and she can get off the bed. I just don't want her to be groggy and fall off. So I was not relaxed at all. I'm just eyes on the monitor, ready to leap up the staircase at any moment to catch the one-year-old, right? Um, and so I, I wasn't very relaxed, but my brain was like, well, this is, you have to do this because you have to keep her safe. You know, you don't want her to fall. So I don't want people to enter into career paths from that energy. I don't think it's healthy. Yeah. I want you to do it like next time I'm going to be a little bit more relaxed because I didn't really get to enjoy myself. Um, because she is really smart and she knows how to get down and she'll be fine. And it's right there. I'll hear her. I'll happily walk up the stairs and hold her and rock her back to sleep or whatnot. I want you to look at moving forward in terms of what you're creating in terms of your natural gifts and talents, that they're from a place of joy and fulfillment. Yes. Good. Great. And you're even getting out of your head right now. You're much calmer. Can you feel it in your body? Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's where the consciousness comes from. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? I said I'm wiggling my, I've been wiggling my toes. Oh, great job. <laughs> And, and that's where that's where people get the inspiration. It's from those moments, not from, you know, like my monitor, you know, uh, example. I wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, engaged. I was scared. And fear is not how we grow. Okay, so that's your homework assignment. You got it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have some very strong clairvoyant yeah. intuitive gifts. And I believe those will become more obvious to you the more you get out of your head and your heart. Perfect. Okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Have a great day. Thanks. You're reading or no? Can I get, am I, do I have any leaks? I'm going to go to the next person. Yeah. I'm so sorry. We'll catch you on the next one. Sorry. We have <laughs> lots to do, lots to do, lots of people to have. And we're going to uh, take Danae calling it from Traverse City, Michigan. Ooh. Hello. Hi. Hello. How Hello. are you? I think Traverse City is really, really pretty. Isn't that true? Is it- Yes, it is very beautiful. It's right next to the water. Yeah. I, is it I think Traverse or Traverse? Tra- I don't, is, what is it? Traverse City? Traverse, Traverse City. City. Traverse City, yeah. My middle daughter did an internship on a farm close to that area oh. one year and cool. just kept telling me, Mom, this is really gorgeous here, really gorgeous. So what can I do for you? So my question is, if I have any gifts in the multisensory world. Well, of course. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> What are they? <laughs> you ha- you're you actually really good at moving energy. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, you're really good at it. Think about your life and how several things have changed for you relatively quickly if you put a little bit of effort into it. Would you agree that's true? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so, so really everyone's multisensory to some degree, honestly. People are definitely multisensory and have the consciousness for their own life. And then some people, like yourself, are meant to be multisensory for the public. So you're really good at moving energy. I would highly suggest, if you haven't done it already, is to study modalities, because I think you'd be a great energy worker. Ooh, Do that you... makes me very excited. <laughs> good, and that means we're on the right track, right? When we, okay. when we feel that excitement, that means like when I walked into a hospital years ago, I was out of my mind excited. Even though yeah. my brain was like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to even be in this hospital. Your mother would be yelling at you right now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you have to follow the ex- – I would study modalities. Have fun. But, um, and then you can either work with one of them or you, a lot of times what people do once they study modalities, they create their own. You know, so energy like medicine. Study under somebody that, that does energy work or, like, t- just take a class and see I, well, that Here's goes. what I would do first. I would go to YouTube. And I would, because I believe the universe is the greatest teacher of all personally. And I would put in energy medicine modalities and I would listen to what other people are saying or doing. And if anything makes you go, ah, then I would look at their website and find out what classes they're teaching. Maybe take a quick course, see how you like it. Is it fun for you? Start playing with this. Start having fun. Okay? I love it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you.
Bye. <laughs> that was easy. That was easy. Yes. <laughs> 877-825-8828 for the Marie Manu Cherry Show. We will take now uh, Martha, who's calling in from Massachusetts. Hi, Martha. Hello, hello. Hello, Martha. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm happy to be talking to you. <laughs> yes. What can I do for you? So, um, uh, some amazing stuff is going to start happening next week. Ooh. Um, I'm going to start doing chemotherapy ah. for, for third stage breast cancer. And so it hasn't hasn't spread around my body. It's oh, that's terrible. nice. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. Congratulations! Uh, did you have a mastectomy? Yeah. No, they're doing they're doing oh, the, chemo um, first. Yes, chemo first, and then hopefully come the fall, uh, these tumors will shrink and they won't have to remove Ooh. all the lymph nodes. Oh, right, all the lymph nodes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, different doctors have different ways of uh, yeah. making those decisions. Okay, so. So here's my so question. Could, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I just want some coaching and how to, oh, yeah. you know. Right. I, yeah. I, well, I, first of all, I loved what you said about chemotherapy. Here's what I recommend, and I don't remember the name of what I'm about to tell you, and I don't have my cell phone with me. I left it home, so I can't look it up. Um, but there are, and, and I know they haven't removed any tissue, so you're going to have to talk to your oncologist about this. Because there are beautiful, wonderful techniques now where they take tissue samples, or in some cases blood, depending where the cancer is, and they send it to labs. Unfortunately, this is not standard of care in the United States, so people have to pay for out-of-pocket. And they actually try the different chemotherapy regimens that are recommended for that cancer on the tissue or the blood to see if it actually works, which is very incredible Uh, and smart. Yeah. Uh, they tested all of my things. So well, they I, tested your DNA, which is important. They tested the, 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 the types. It's a triple positive. I know, but, but that's still not the yeah. same thing as testing the chemo yeah. on to yeah. the tissue. Because, see, modern medicine has this belief, which is inaccurate, that one size fits all. That you have this type of breast cancer, this is the type of chemo we use. You have this type of you know, health issue, this is the medicine that we use. But people are very unique based on their emotional body, based on Mm -hmm. the energy that they put in their body and and their belief systems. That that changes their chemistry even in their body. So if we take tissue samples um, and send them to these labs that are in this country and around the world, because in some parts of the world this is standard of care, actually, as it should be here in the U.S., and then, the, and so people don't have to waste their time doing certain treatments that aren't going to work for their tissues. Does that make sense? Mm. So s- it does. It does. There's a, a, a one treatment that's going to last eight weeks, and then another one that lasts six weeks, and that's more specific, I guess. Right. To, to right. what I have. What but, I um, what I do like, but so I would ask you to ask your oncologist. A lot of oncologists don't like this new medicine for some ridiculous reason. And you don't have any tissue samples available because you still have your breasts intact. But I, yeah. I would definitely talk to your oncologist about that, about this so that you can at least get their feedback and find out um, more about this powerful tool that can actually save people a lot of time and energy. But here's something that I loved when we started our conversation, that you're excited about your treatment. That's a very important aspect. If people regardless of what their treatment is, if they're authentically excited about it, that's a really good sign. That means that they're going to utilize the medicines, whatever type of medicines they choose, holistic or otherwise, in a positive way. So this is a very, yeah. you're starting off in a really good place. Like you're excited about it. Congratulations. I'm happy for you that well, you're excited. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, you know, I just want to try and keep my, my point of view positive and, you know, carry on, you know, in an right. upbeat kind of way. Well, you don't have any leaks in your energy system, so you're on the right track, and I would keep using positive what-if questions. What if my body loves this treatment? What if this treatments work incredibly well? What if I'm super happy and fulfilled? What if my energy system is pouring positive subatomic particles in all of my organs with every breath I take? Start repeating those what-if questions all the time, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so You're much. welcome, and we're going to send you tons of yes. light. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Martha, for joining the show, 877-825-8828. And we'll now take uh, Camille in Los Angeles, I believe, boarding a plane or Ooh, close to where it. where are you going? 
Oh, I'm uh, going to Austin, Texas. But hey. I'm, oh, the tax, we're taxing, so we'll see how long this lasts. Okay, okay. What can I do <laughs> uh, for you? This is the first time. All right, well, <laughs> yeah, this I'll is ask true. my quickly. Sure. Um, I've been with my boyfriend a little over a year, and he just moved in a couple months ago, and um, things have been a little, some more challenges have come up. Um, some new things I'm learning about him, and I feel like we're having some issues with communication. Yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to decide if, you know, this is a challenge I'm meant to go through, and he's sort of that person I'm supposed to be with, or yeah. well, the I things w- I'm getting are not, you know. I wouldn't away. give up quite yet. I mean, you are picky. Agreed? <laughs> yes. You're so picky. <laughs> I haven't been married yet. <laughs> yeah, and and so he's having to, he, like, he's not used to doing all the hoops that you want him to do. You're picky. Yes. <laughs> and, and you're also... He also gets a little angry, too. Does he? Uh, okay, well, so yeah. I would sit down and talk about the anger because that's not the appropriate way to respond in a relationship. But I would I would ask that you relax a little bit. And, and okay. maybe not everything has to be in perfection the way you want it to be. You like the pillows a certain way. I mean, you're, you, you look at every little something that's on the carpet and you remove it immediately you like the kitchen super clean you know you're you're just picky agreed yes yeah, yes yeah, okay correct. so that's not fun honestly I, I i would not want to live with someone like that I, I and i have actually now that i think about it i have um and, and my house is clean i mean i'm a little bit messy in my bedroom but i have a housekeeper that comes once a month and cleans everything up for me which is lovely but i i think you need to relax maybe you need to have a housekeeper come if if he can't clean to your level and definitely the anger needs to be adjusted because regardless of what's going on you should not be yelled at no matter what right okay yeah yeah and i think i sometimes that he's upset with me and i just I'm like, I'm not exactly sure what I did to upset you. Well, I think think you're pushing his buttons by having all these control issues with your home. Got it. Okay. That you're pushing his buttons and he's used to being relaxed and it's okay if he leaves a glass out on the table for the day. Not with you. Nope. It's got to be soaking in the sink if it's got anything on it or immediately put in the dishwasher. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's stressful for, for him. That's very stressful. Okay. All right, so I think relax you, more. And I think you guys should sit down and talk about this right away. Yeah, we're 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 talking with like a therapist to help oh, us good. out. And, That's good. Um, great start. Smart. You know. Yeah. Because you guys do have great chemistry yep. when other things aren't happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like when it's good it's really good and when it's not going well it's very <laughs> It's pretty terrible to have to be around it. A little chaotic, so. yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well, let's see if we can get things to shift because you're also terrified of a relationship. So I think your buttons have been pushed. And so so maybe get Lauren's book and start doing some of those exercises you so you can work on some trauma that you have about relationships. Okay? Okay. All okay. Right. And have a Excellent. safe flight. Have yeah. a wonderful time. Go listen to some music. Really okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Thanks. That is the first time I've ever had that. She's I mean, taxiing away. I mean, we've had it in the, the in the bathrooms, right, where people are hiding She could have been in the employers. bathroom on the plane. That's true. She could have been. But, <laughs> she, been. but they won't let you go in the bathroom until they're up in the air That's at a certain true. altitude, yeah. right? It's true. Yeah. Okay. Who do we have next? Yeah, we'll take uh, Sherry calling him from Southern California. We have two Sherrys, but hopefully I got the right one. Hello? Sherry? Hi, Marie. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Lovely. What Marie. I, yeah. Oh, my question is, I heard you talking about golden arches yeah. that we can build behind us. They just naturally think- form. They naturally form. So, But you're right. In a way, they are built when you're doing a lot of internal personal work, consciously or unconsciously. And they just will start okay. to magically appear behind you. And then there'll be 50 guides in each archway to help you yeah i bet there's a lot right now wondering i wanted to see if with the work i've been doing with right much of it has been from you and um i want to see if i'm if i have that if i'm starting to build that or what that looks like you have three archways behind you so that means you have 150 extra spirit guides right now wow i know And, and so this is not the time to stop doing inner work but Okay. Perhaps do it more playfully if you haven't been u- utilizing it that way. Make it more fun. La- okay. You know, laugh about things. Like, joke, laugh. You know, like our last caller, I think, would be really fun if when she sees a, a dirty dish somewhere, just to laugh about it. Like, oh, there's oh. a dirty dish right there. <laughs> I wonder how long and before mold starts to grow oh, into it. You know, oh, like, boy. like she needs to relax, right? She needs to relax about it. So I want you to relax about it. But yeah, you have an extra 150 guides. Your energy looks excellent. No leaks. 
that I can see. That is amazing. Well, good job. That's Congratulations. Oh, well, you know, I can give the advice, but I can't go to everyone's house and make them do the work. <laughs> I've thought about it. Believe me. Um, <laughs> well, you're in my mind constantly. Oh. Even when, if, Whoop. Then I slip into the right tone and relax. Oh, well, I'm very happy for you. So you deserve you. it. It's my pleasure. And have a gorgeous and beautiful day. Thank you. You do the same. All righty. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, Sherry, for calling in. And we'll take the other Sherry. We'll go back-to-back -back Sherry's. And we'll take uh, this Sherry. She's calling from San Diego. Hi, Sherry. Hi, guys. Thanks Hi, for Sherry. taking my call. Of sure. course. What can we do for you? So it's, it's my back. Okay. Something happened with my back, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And I love to just get in there and see what's going on. Okay. Well, you're, it's pretty active. Honestly, it probably really does hurt. Or has some sort of spasm kind of situation going on you know like is that true yes yeah yes. i'm so sorry yeah because it's very red for me energetically which means it's acute as well so people when they have back issues or history of them or whatnot chronic or you know intermittent it has to do with being stubborn not being flexible <laughs> enough. <laughs> I love that people laugh oh, when wow. I criticize them. And I don't mean to criticize, yeah, no, criticize. No. I don't mean to at all. I'm just, you know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm pretty direct, right? So, so oh, what could you- And I've worked with you before. Oh, yeah. good, good. So you're comfortable with it. I love that. So- But this back stuff is new. It's completely oh, new. Well, that means that maybe you're working on something really new that you need to let go of that's really important for you and you're stubbornly holding on to it. Hmm. So what in your life well, is different? Oh, God. Well, I have been trying to do too much. That's kind of my pattern. And uh -huh. I was trying to be independent and go on a camping trip. And I, to Yosemite, and I was just prepping too much. And my body just, I bent over to pick something up. And it just like, strained pain and said, nope, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so if you Google, this is going to sound weird, arm swinging uh, tummy exercises. There's this lovely Chinese doctor on YouTube who does this really quick video. It's one of my favorites and it strengthens the abdominal muscles and eases back problems. So if you can't find it, just write into energyintuitive.com. We'll send you a link to it. It works amazingly well. And next time, take someone with you on your trip. Because well, yeah, I've learned that. Lesson. Yeah, we all, <laughs> we all need help. Yeah, We all need help. Um, and I'm glad you rested. I, I bet you're learning a lot. Sometimes the universe helps us to rest so that we can learn. And Benny's giving me the notes. I have to go. Um, thank you so much for calling in. Wishing everyone joyful blessings and have a beautiful and